To say this has been done before is misleading. Yes, people have climbed ropes, and yes, people have accomplished athletic feats at the Eiffel Tower. But no one's done exactly what French athlete Anouk Garnier did in Paris earlier this week. The 34-year-old obstacle course racer pulled herself up, up and away in the hopes of surpassing the Guinness World Record for highest rope climb. That record was set by another obstacle course racer named Thomas Van Tonder back in 2020. He reached a height of 90 meters or just over 295 feet between the Soweto Towers in Johannesburg, South Africa. Garnier, who's only been rope climbing since 2022, knew she could break the women's record of 26 meters for doing this, but could she break Tonder's record of 90? Guinness hasn't yet validated her climb, so it's not in the record book yet. But Garnier ascended well past Tonder's height, climbing a total of 110 meters or 361 feet in 18 minutes. Along with the presumed record, she raised money for cancer research, and she's also scheduled to carry the Olympic torch this May. There's a new movie coming out about Fridays, and it's been rated awesome. I'm Carl Azus for the world from A to Z. Excited you could join us today. Let's keep this thing rolling. Closer ties are being forged by two nations on opposite sides of the Pacific. The U.S. and Japan, who were bitter enemies during World War II, are now close allies. And at a formal visit at the White House this week, their leaders planned closer ties to strengthen that alliance at a time when another Asian country has been working to strengthen its position in the East. The leaders of the U.S. and Japan are hailing a new era of strategic cooperation that sends a clear message to China. U.S. President Joe Biden hosted Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida for a state visit in honor to underscore Japan's importance with a focus on the Indo-Pacific region. Now, they announced a range of moves to enhance military, economic and technological cooperation. Now, Japan has been at the center of Biden's alliance building in the Indo-Pacific. Kushida has pledged to increase defense spending by 2 percent of GDP by 2037 and has acquired American Tomahawk missiles. He's also provided ongoing support to Ukraine. New steps were announced on trade and economic ties, diplomacy, climate change, space exploration. In fact, a Japanese astronaut will be the first non-American to travel with NASA to the moon. Uh, critical technologies like AI. Officials say that there will be a joint AI research initiative between Carnegie Mellon and Keio University and defense. Defense, a key takeaway here. In fact, around 70 agreements on defense cooperation were made, including moves to upgrade military command structures to boost coordination. On the back of recent maritime aggression, the U.S. and its allies, including Japan, see China as a growing threat in the region. Thursday saw a third leader join them, Philippines President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. It was the first time the heads of the U.S., Japan and the Philippines had gotten together. America and the Philippines have had a mutual defense treaty since 1951. It says they have each other's back if either is attacked by another country. And President Biden said America's commitment to that and Japan's defense is ironclad. Again, analysts say this was all to show increasing cooperation between the U.S. and its Asian allies with the big goal of offsetting the growing strength of China. On this date in world history. The first fighting in America's Civil War took place on this date in 1861. Confederate forces began firing on Fort Sumter on South Carolina's east coast. U.S. troops eventually surrendered the fort, and the North and South geared up for war that would ultimately last four years and claim more than 600,000 American lives. The longest serving president in U.S. history died on this date in 1945. Franklin Delano Roosevelt passed away of a brain hemorrhage after more than 12 years in office. Vice President Harry Truman became president, won re-election in 1948, and stayed in office till 1953. And on April 12, 1961, a Soviet cosmonaut became the first person ever to travel to space. Yuri Gagarin climbed aboard the Vostok 1 capsule and orbited the Earth in about an hour and a half. He became an instant celebrity and won numerous awards inside and outside the Soviet Union. Outward and out. 
who launched the Grand Trunk Herald, the first newspaper published on a train in 1862. William Randolph Hearst, Howard Hughes, Thomas Edison, Andrew Carnegie. The small paper, which was successful, was an early business venture of American inventor Thomas Edison. One thing that can dramatically increase the value of an antique is if it has a story associated with it. The Packard automobile that actress Carol Lombard bought for her husband, Clark Gable. A violin once played by a second-class passenger aboard the Titanic. An antique collector in New York came across an instrument that had documentation dating back to 1890 when a famous American bought it. But it's how he used it that makes the item's history all the more fascinating. You never know what you're going to find when you're out hunting antiques. Robert Friedman came into quite a surprise after he picked up a $45,000 late 19th century Steinway piano. And it turned out it was once owned by none other than Thomas Edison. And that wasn't even the most shocking thing about it. Ronnie and I were in our living room when he came in first to tune the piano and he looked down at the piano and he said, oh, those are Edison's bite marks. You heard that right. Since he was known for inventing the phonograph, it makes sense that he may have bought the piano to experiment with recording an instrument instead of just a voice. But with age came hearing loss. Not ideal for a guy who loves sound. For many, many years that he used to bite into his music boxes and also uh, his recording equipment so he could hear the piano better. Chomping on the frame of both pianos and phonographs allowed the vibrations to pass through the inventor's skull, creating a whole new way of experiencing the music. Now, there isn't any photo proof of Edison biting a piano, but he has been quoted as saying, I hear through my teeth and through my skull. I bite my teeth into the wood and then I get it good and strong. And Friedman actually did test Edison's listening method. He found that you really could hear in a richer way by biting on the piano. Aviano, a town in northeastern Italy, is a great place to start our World of Viewers tour. At Aviano Middle High School, we're excited to see the Saints today. Mr. Birch's class is watching not too far from the Dolomite Mountains. In the Prairie State of Illinois, we have Mr. Pierce's class with us from Weber High School in Bluford. Let's go Trojans! And from Queen Creek, Arizona, we welcome the Wildcats of Queen Creek Junior High. Thanks for watching from Miss Hibbs' class. Finally, a real life story of real life castaways who got rescued in real life. This took place in a very remote part of the Pacific called Micronesia. On Easter, three men went fishing but got caught in large ocean swells that damaged their boat's motor. They made it to an uninhabited island where there happened to be a freshwater well and coconuts to eat. But they had no way to radio for help. Their batteries were dead. So they made a help sign on the beach with palm fronds that caught the attention of a U.S. Coast Guard plane on April 7th. And the craziest part is, one of the Coast Guard rescuers happened to be related to the castaways. Being castaways might last a ways, but it doesn't mean that you gotta waste away. The takeaway, for your own sake anyway, is to use what you can just to make away, like palm fronds that you're able to shake away. Even if it looks a little bit fake in a way, it's an effort that might make you ache today, but paves the way and will save the day when a cry for help turns to help that's on the way. Put your palms together for the world from A to Z. I'm Coral Azuz, and I hope this weekend brings you a world of joy.